Hello friends, welcome to Suresh Agarwal's Mathematics Shortcuts. In this video, we are going to discuss about plastids. So probably by this time, you must already be knowing that plastids are present only in plant cells or we can say that plastids are absent in animal cells. So if you have not seen the video, you must see the video of difference between plant cell and animal cell where you will find this difference mentioned. In this video, we are going to study in detail about the structure and how a plastid functions in a plant cell. So let's get started. First of all, I would like to tell you that plastids are the cell organelles which are basically responsible for photosynthesis and for imparting color to various parts of the plant. Normally, it is thought that plastids are always green in color, but that is not true. Plastids are actually of three different types. The first type is leucoplast, chloroplast and chromoplast. So let us talk about all these plastids in detail now. So as I mentioned, the three types of plastids, first is leucoplasts. These are the colorless plastids, that is these plastids, they don't have any color in them. So they are the colorless plastids and they are present basically in you can say like rice grains then potato as you can see that these things potatoes rice grains they don't have any color if you cut a potato it's somewhat white in color or if you cut a very thin slice it will be probably transparent in color similarly a rice grain also doesn't have any particular color. So the plastids present in these things, they are called as leucoplasts or the colorless plastids. So this is the first type of plastids that we have. The second type of plastids is chromoplast. So chromoplasts are basically the colored plastids. So they impart color to the various parts of a plant like the flowers, the fruits, you can see there are a variety of colors of flowers that are present around us. Red, blue, yellow, orange, purple, pink. So many colors are there in flowers. Almost every color is there. You can find a flower of almost every color. So how do they get that color? That color is basically due to the presence of chromoplasts, which are the colored plastids and they are responsible for imparting color to the flowers and the fruits. So they are basically present in flowers and fruits. The third type of plastids that we are going to talk about are the chloroplasts. This is the most common type of plastids and they are the green plastids. So all the parts of the plant that are green in color, they are green because of the presence of chloroplasts. So chloroplasts are those plastids which impart green color to the leaves or if some fruits when they are raw they appear green but when they ripen up their color changes such as papaya, mango and many other fruits you can think of. So in all or in broad we have basically these three types of plastids. Yes chromoplasts can be considered to be a subcategory of chromoplasts because they are also imparting color to the parts of the plant. So now we'll be talking about what the structure of a chloroplast is like. We'll be talking about the detailed structure of a chloroplast, what are the various parts in it and what are the functions associated with those parts. Because chloroplast, they are basically, they help in photosynthesis. So these are the plastids which are present in every leaf or every green part of the plant and we need to know in detail how they function. So let's study in detail about the detailed structure of the chloroplast now. Let us now draw the structure of a chloroplast. A chloroplast is somewhat like mitochondria in its basic nature. It is also a double membraned cell organelle. So you can see I'm drawing a double membrane over here. There are two membranes, the inner membrane and the outer membrane present in the chloroplast.
we will be drawing it like this a double membraned cell organelle now inside these cell organelles we have structures like this these are actually stacks which can be drawn at some gaps from each other and at some places these stacks they are interconnected like this and there is no particular number to which you have to draw this you can draw this as per your choice so it could be drawn like this it would be good if you draw along with me if you want to learn this diagram nicely so these stacks are connected like this to each other now what is the name given to these stacks the individual structure if i mark the structure like this if i make a magnified view of the stacks i have made it like this so this entire stack is known as the granum or the grana so granum is the singular for one stack but if we talk about it in plural then we call it a granum then the individual if i talk only about this one sac like structure this is known as a thylakoid so now you know the difference between a granum and a thylakoid because most of the time i find people getting confused in this like what to label as granum and what to label as thylakoid so the entire stack is the granum and the single sac one single sac is the thylakoid now if we want to know where the chlorophyll is present i am using a red color to indicate the presence of chlorophyll here so chlorophyll pigment is present only in these thylakoids so this is where the chlorophyll is present only in the thylakoid so we'll be drawing these dots in all the thylakoids that we have made in the diagram so that we come to know that yes this is the pigment that is present so like this we have the chlorophyll pigment present inside the thylakoids here what else now the part that is present outside the thylakoids this part this is known as the stroma or the matrix so it has two names it can be called as stroma or it can be called as matrix so the black dots that i am putting here this is the stroma or the matrix that is present here inside the stroma we have some photosynthetic enzymes so these are the things which are present in the stroma photosynthetic enzymes dna and ribosomes so just like mitochondria had its own dna plastids also have their own dna and their own ribosomes that means they are also capable of uh, making their own proteins plus they are called self replicating cell organelles that is they can divide themselves within a cell without the involvement of the nucleus so nucleus is not required for giving instructions to the chloroplast or to the mitochondria because they are self replicating so we can use the word self replicating for plastids and they are also semi autonomous semi autonomous means they have their own control they are semi autonomous cell organelles right so these are two basic characteristics associated with plastids especially we are talking about uh, chloroplast over here so the detailed structure of chloroplast is being discussed right now in this video in order to avoid any confusion i have given it the heading here now what about photosynthesis we know that photosynthesis occurs in two parts that is light reactions and dark reactions light reactions require the presence of chlorophyll so that means 
where do the light reactions occur yes the light reactions they will occur in the granum so light reactions they occur in the granum and dark reactions they occur in the stroma or the matrix so the dark reactions of photosynthesis they occur the light reactions they occur in the granum and the dark reactions they occur in the stroma or the matrix so this is about the structure of the chloroplast and the types of plastids that we have and in order to enhance your knowledge further don't forget to subscribe to our channel suresh agarwal's mathematics shortcuts plus pdfs are also available on our website that is www.sureshagarwal.in in case you want handwritten notes of these concepts don't forget to visit our website thanks for watching this and uh, keep uh, checking in to our website also